What's going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to properly debug python code in pycharm so let us get right into it all right so i'm going to show you how to debug python code in pycharm however all of this should also be applicable to various other ides and editors basically whatever you're using if it supports debugging the process shouldn't be too different because the basic idea of debugging is always the same you set breakpoints you look at the code you look at the state of the execution and uh, you step in, you step over, you step out of functions. And that's basically it. We're going to learn about this today. So VS Code, I think, supports debugging, at least with plugins. Um, I think Spider supports debugging. I don't know if the default Python idle supports debugging. I don't think so. Um, but whatever supports debugging, the process is not going to be too different. It's just going to have a different UI, maybe different buttons with different icons. But the process is going to be the same. The basic idea of debugging is that we can set breakpoints and these breakpoints pause the program so that we can look at certain details like what variables do we have, what are the values that are assigned to these variables and which function can we uh, look into or which function is being executed right now. We can um, go through the program step by step and so on. And how do we set a breakpoint in PyCharm and also in basically every other development environment is we click on the left side here, um, which is no longer inside of the coding section. We just click on a line and we set a breakpoint. So in this case, we set a breakpoint at line five. And this means that if we now run the program in debug mode, the program is going to stop once it reaches that line or actually every time it reaches that line. So since this is in the loop here, it's going to stop every time we get to that line. Um, and then we can look at certain things. So for example, if I run this now without debugging, you're going to see nothing happens. We just have a simple bubble sort function here. Um, and we have a list of numbers, then we sort it, we print it, that's it. Um, if we now run this in debug mode, so we basically click on this red button here on the top right, this is going to run the debug mode. Uh, we're going to, to go in the first loop in the second loop, we're going to do the check and then we see, okay, now we have a problem because uh, four and three are not in the right order. So we get to that line of code. And here we can see now I know this is probably a bit small, but I cannot really increase the font size here. Uh, we can see down here that we have variables and we have I and J, which are zero. So those are the loop control variables, but we also have these numbers. So the numbers list here and here we can see index zero, one, two, three, and so on. We can also see the length uh, being set to 11 and we can see how these variables are at the, or how these values are at the respective position uh, positions in the list. And now what I can do here is I have a couple of buttons like step over or step into or step into my code or also step out. The basic idea is, and this is not applicable to this line right now, is that we can step into functions. So this can be applicable to uh, line two and three. We can take a look at that in a second. But basically stepping into a function means that we don't just want to execute this line. We also want to debug further into the function. So if we step into the range function, we're not just going to get the generator, we're going to see how the generator is being created. So we can go through the range function step by step as well. Uh, at least if we have the code, obviously. So here we can basically just step over meaning that we're gonna step one, one, uh, one step further into the program. And now you can see that three and four exchanged the place. So you can see three and four are no longer four and three, but three and four because we now swap the order. And now we can also step, 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 step all the time. You can see J changes, you can see I changes, and you can see that down here in the variable field, but you can also see that up here um, in the code, which is probably PyCharm specific. I'm not sure if every IDE does it like that, but here you can see what the list looks like. You can see what J looks like. Um, and essentially I can just step over all the time and whenever we reach that point, um, we basically see that the list changes. Now I can also, let me just see where the, where the program is. We can also see here the, um, don't we have this? There you go. Resume program basically means um, we don't want to step manually anymore. So we basically say, okay, now you stopped, do whatever you want, continue. But one thing that you need to keep in mind here is that if you have a breakpoint and you get to that breakpoint again, it's going to stop. So I can press continue all the time so I don't have to step manually, but basically it's always going to stop me 
when I reach the breakpoint. Now I'm not sure if we can remove the breakpoint here. Yeah, we can remove the breakpoint, then continue, and then it's not gonna stop anymore. Um, but this is essentially what happens, right? So if I set a breakpoint here, I can also run the debug mode and it's gonna uh, stop immediately. And now I can choose, do I wanna just step over? If I step over, nothing happens because it just executes that line. It basically goes through all this code in one step without us having to step manually. However, if I say step into, and this is the interesting part about step into, uh, I can step into the function. So I can step here into the bubble sort function. And now I'm inside of the function and now I can step again through the individual steps. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to step into one of those functions here. Don't think so. Uh, because they're part of the core Python functions. Um, unless maybe I use this. No. Okay. But I can step in my own into my own function. So when I use step into here, I step into bubble sort. When I use um, step over, it just steps over this line. So if I have another line here, maybe calling bubble sort again on numbers, it's just gonna um, go there. So let me debug this again. So if I say step over, it just goes to the next line. Whereas if I say step into, I can go into the function. So I do debug again, step into, I go into bubble sort. And the interesting thing is that I can also um, maybe just use a sample function here, sample function, and this is just going to return a list of one so that we can say, okay, print the result of the sorted list plus sample function so that we have a concatenation. Now, if I run this in debug mode, and if I say step into, I can choose which function to step into, at least in PyCharm, I can click on the function here. So now if I don't want to step into bubble sort, I want to step into the sample function, I just click on this one. And now I step into the sample function. And here I can step again. Now here, I only have one statement. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. But I can use the step here to step through the individual functions. Um, that's the basic idea of debugging, we can step over, meaning that we just step to the next line, we can step into seeing more details about the codes, more details about the function. And we can step out of which is maybe also interesting, I didn't show that yet. So if I set a breakpoint here, and I debug and now I say step into Oh, actually, I did step over now. So let me run this again. Um, step into now I choose bubble sort now I step over maybe and you can see now I'm in that loop and I cannot really get out. In order to step out of this function, I can just use this step out. And then I'm here, again, this whole function executed without me having to step manually. Uh, and now I'm back here again. Now, as the name already suggests, debugging is primarily used in the context of bugs, not necessarily to just play around with code and see how it works, even though you can do that if you want to. The primary purpose of debugging is to find bugs to see what causes unwanted behavior to find the root of problems. This is the primary purpose of debugging. And for that, I have prepared a simple example here. We have a simple function loop division, it takes a dividend and a divisor, and then it gives us a quotient as a result. How it does that is it starts with zero. And then while the dividend is greater or equal to the divisor, we basically subtract the divisor from the dividend, increasing the quotient by one. And that gives us uh, the correct result, of course, without the remainder, and it only works for integers. But this is just a sample function here. And down here, we have a simple experiment where we say, okay, for i in range five, so we do it five times, we generate a random dividend and a random divisor, uh, random meaning that the dividend is a number between zero and 100. And the divisor is a number between zero and 10. And then we print dividend divided by divisor is whatever the loop division produces just to see if we get correct results. Now I know that probably most of you will see what the problem is here. But I want to show you how you can encounter a problem that is not maybe, uh, maybe not obvious, uh, right away. So we're going to start this here. And uh, now we, enc uh, we encountered that case immediately, we don't encounter it every time here, for example, I now ran a program and we got correct results. So of course, without a remainder without floating point numbers, but uh, we were able to do five such experiments. And that was it, we didn't have a problem. But sometimes we run the script and it uh, for some reason, freezes or it, it goes into an endless loop. So uh, basically, now in the start, it doesn't do anything. Uh, then it works again, then 
uh, it doesn't work again immediately, then it works again, then it doesn't work again. And there's no pattern really, if we just look at it like that. So we have 71 divided by eight is eight. So that works, the next one doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? And again, I know that most of you probably know why it doesn't work. But still, maybe this is just a sample, maybe you have a more complex problem, PyCharm or Python doesn't really tell you what the problem is, because it doesn't tell you, hey, look, you have this and that problem, you don't even get an exception. Um, you just get unwanted behavior, and you don't know why. So what you can do here is, you can basically, for example, go into that line, set a breakpoint, and then cause the debugging mode. And you can see here now, okay, 56 and six, let's continue the program uh, and see if it works or not. Okay, now we can go to the console here, you can see, okay, this one worked. So let's continue again uh, with what was the value four and, and 26, or at least now it's four and 26. So let's see if it works, it works. 95 and three works one and one works. Okay, this time we didn't encounter an error. So let's run this again. Um, 81 seven works 27 two works 77 works 97 works 41 two works. So now we can do this all the time. Let me just change this value here to two so that we have uh, less values to choose from. Um, and we can force the error case, which is of course, if the divisor is zero, because you cannot divide by zero. And since we don't get um, the exception here, because we don't try to divide by zero, we try to apply our function, the loop division uh, to a divisor with zero, uh, which is zero. Because of that, we get into an endless loop, obviously. So we can run this here now. And you can see that we have divisor one, this works, divisor one works, divisor one works, now we have divisor zero. So now I can press continue again. And now you can see nothing happens. So I can go into the console, I can see, okay, we don't get the result. So this was a problem case. So let me force stop this program. And you can see here, the last value was dividend 72 and zero. Now, maybe I don't know why this happens. So what I can do here is uh, next time I encounter a zero, I can stop rerun again. Next time I encounter a zero, I won't continue like now, I will step into the function. So I step into the loop division here. And I'm going to see what happens if my divisor is zero. And what happens is that uh, no matter what I do, I subtract zero every time the dividend doesn't change the divisor doesn't change. And I have this endless loop of increasing the quotient by one. Um, and of course, we can see immediately why that happens. Now, of course, in this example, we were also able to see it without debugging because it was a trivial example. But oftentimes, you won't really see in complex programs, what happens and why it happens, you can only see some patterns. And with debugging, you will be able to spot uh, the the root or to find a root of the pro uh, of the problem. So this is the idea of debugging, you can set breakpoints, you can see uh, in what kind of cases things go wrong, and then you can see why they go wrong. And of course, no one is going to tell you, hey, this is why it goes wrong. But you can see, for example, okay, we're in an endless loop, whenever we have zero, why does this happen? Because the dividend doesn't change because we don't subtract anything. And because of that, we never get out of the function. So um, yeah, this is how you do debugging in Python, and in particular in PyCharm. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.